Welcome back, everyone. It's 2.05. I'm ready to introduce our next presenter. Our next presentation is titled Sharing for Caring at your local library. Stacey, you'll note that somebody in the chat shared they have very fond memories of the Macedon Library. And I think I shared at the beginning of the day today that I grew up in Wayne County and very familiar with the Macedon area and the library as well. I'd like to introduce you all to Stacy Wixall. Stacy has directed the Macedon Public Library for a decade. Her interest in providing respite services to both caregivers and those with a dementia diagnosis led her to creating two different programs. The first, Memory Lane, used music to trigger memories participants could share. The second and currently offered program, Seniors Helping Seniors, involves having lifespan trained senior volunteers working with patrons who have a dementia diagnosis. Stacy earned a master's of science degree in library and information science from Syracuse's University School I School in 2008. Her mission is to connect people and ideas to improve the quality of life for everyone. It's a wonderful mission. We applaud your innovation and I'm gonna have you take it away. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction, Teresa. Um, I am going to show you how today's library um, is not your grandma's library, but it is a library that your grandma or your grandpa would probably like to go to. Um, libraries support seniors in so many ways that please don't let this presentation make you feel limited to what I'm recommending here, because I'm sure there are far more ideas out there that um, my sampling does not cover, but this will get your feet wet in case you haven't walked through the doors of a library in a while. Um, you'll see there's plenty of things that we have to offer. So the first thing I wanna talk about is um, Alzheimer's support groups. So one of the reasons that I'm very interested in um, having the Seniors Helping Seniors program, and I got into the Memory Lane program years back, is because I realized one in three seniors will receive a diagnosis of dementia. And also because on a personal note, um, one of my family members, when I was a child, my grandfather was, well, they thought that he had Alzheimer's. Turned out it, it wasn't exactly Alzheimer's, but he did have a form of dementia. And so that really left a big imprint on me. So I am guessing there are a lot of other library directors that also have these experiences. And because so many people get this diagnosis, I think we all can say that the majority of us do care about this segment of the population. So libraries often will have Alzheimer's support groups. These groups are excellent for anybody who is feeling isolated. They have a family member that has this diagnosis and they really could use a support group. Um, the Alzheimer's Association has trained facilitators for these groups and often they do meet in libraries. So if you know someone who's recently received a diagnosis or even if they have, have this um, diagnosis from a few years ago, but they really could use this kind of support, please look to your local library because there's a very good chance that they could belong to a group like this at the library. Um, this is a slide about our seniors helping seniors group. Um, I think we're the only library in Wayne County that does this. I, I got the idea because there is a church in Wayne County in Ontario. Um, I believe it's the Methodist Church that has a group. I went and I viewed how they do things and got a lot of pointers, such as um, reaching out to Lifespan, to have volunteers trained and background checked. Um, what happens when we offer this group, it's fantastic, actually. <laughs> um, we have live music, so you can see Kathy and Denny. Uh, Denny plays guitar, Kathy plays fiddle. They play for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. They kind of judge the reaction of the crowd. Most of the time it's closer to an hour because our folks really enjoy the live music. We have lyrics printed for songs that can be sung along and uh, they enjoy that. And a tip, if anybody wants to do this at their library or wants to recommend it to a library, um, make sure those lyrics have really big font. We learned that right away. <laughs> um, 
We have comfort pets that we managed to get from the county because they have a grant for comfort pets for anyone in the county that is age 60 and up to be able to have one pet per household. And uh, we had people in the community that actually donated their pets to the library for this program. Um, so you can see in the picture with the lady that looks like she has a cat. That's one of the comfort pets. They purr, they, the more you do, to, like if you pet them, they'll, they'll purr and they'll even flip over onto their back so you can rub their belly. And we have birds, we have a dog. If you look way over, you can see the little dog with a little red bandana. The comfort pets are a huge hit with all the seniors. Um, other things that we do at the Seniors Helping Seniors program, um, we try to have a variety of short, simple programs, or not programs, but activities planned. So we'll do little craft programs. I always try to have an edible craft. So maybe you use marshmallows and um, pretzels to put together like a little snowman, and then you can eat them. Um, we like to do some physical activities. So we have um, hoops and balls and the seniors have a good time just trying to get um, a ball through a hoop. We have beanbag games. Um, balloons are a huge hit. So all kinds of things that get the people moving and grooving. And everybody brings their lunch. And this is another great facet. So caregivers can choose to use this as respite, but they also can choose to stay. We have people who do both. Um, and so the people who have the diagnosis, we've found get along great with each other and have a great time chatting with one another. Um, some of the men really like to gravitate towards Denny, uh, especially the ones that like music and they'll chat about their experiences from the past playing music. Um, and also the caregivers who do choose to stay, they like to talk to one another. So it's like a, 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 on many levels, it's it's a support system for all different types of people. And the seniors that volunteer, um, they really enjoy doing it too because it's so rewarding just to work with the people and everybody just has a good time. So if, if as I say, if you um, wanna recommend this to your library, I would highly recommend that you do because it's a great program and Lifespan can really help get something like that rolling. Sorry to spend so much time on this slide. You can probably tell um, it's something I really am proud of and I really enjoy doing. Another um, tip that you may or may not be aware of, um, many libraries have free tax, tax preparation available for seniors. And we reach out and we um, have this service through our the county that we're located in. And the volunteers who help with this are all trained by the IRS. So if you have people who are thinking, well, I don't know if I want somebody to do my taxes, who is this person? They've all been rigorously trained and it really is a great program for anybody on a fixed budget. Libraries offer technology support, whether it's us, and that's a picture of me helping someone in, in the one picture, I'm in the orange sweater. Um, we also have volunteers that come in. Uh, we pair with uh, Rochester Literacy Volunteers to have volunteers come in and do one-on-one -on -one time. And people can ask any sort of question they may have. And it could be maybe you have been trying to be part of a program and you have to sign up online as so many things today are online and maybe you're not you know up to speed and the most tech savvy will will help you get through the process of whatever it is you're trying to do and maybe you just want to learn how to be able to be independent and be able to do things on your own we'll also be happy to help you out with that too. Um, and also our tech volunteers. They, you can even make a appointment with our tech volunteer and say, I really wanna know how to share pictures using my iPhone. And they will take a half hour and walk you through it or even longer if you need it. So um, if you need tech help, the library is definitely the place to go. Um, our library and a few in the area have digital equity booths. So one of the reasons that I wanted to have a digital equity booth at my library is specifically so people 
could avoid having to drive distances to get health care. Now, maybe not all health care, but those um, well, like appointments just to check in and make sure everything is okay, or perhaps somebody has a uh, procedure coming up and they need to be prepped on what to do to prepare for the procedure, they could come to the library and go in the little booth that's pictured. There's a computer in there with a camera and a computer, and they'd be all set up to be able to have that appointment at the library and not have to worry about how am I going to get to the city? Uh, how, am I, how am I going to find transportation? It just can make it a lot easier for people. But beyond that, um, the digital equity booths also make it easy to do anything that may require the use of a computer with a camera and the ability to be able to speak like I am now. So maybe you want to have a, a meeting with your family through the internet. Like you could use the digital equity booth for that. Um, we've had people use it for support groups um, because they can't attend something in person. So they use the, the booth and they go in there and they do their meeting on the computer. So many uses. And the nice part of it is a lot of people would like to participate in things online, but they're not always comfortable with the technology or how to set up technology they may have, have at home to do it. It's all ready to go here. And if you have a problem, you have all these people right in the building that can help you out. So um, think of libraries when you have opportunities to do things that are online. Um, we're, we're always here to help you. Um, mobile hotspots. So in the more rural areas, oftentimes being able to connect to the internet is really difficult. Many libraries um, across New York State offer hotspots that can be borrowed. Now, if you're not familiar, a hotspot is just it looks like the, the device in the middle of your screen and it just, your computer through Bluetooth can connect to it and you will have the ability to go online to do whatever it is you need to do. So that could be helpful if, let's say you have the technology skills and the technology available to you to do a telehealth appointment, but maybe your internet where you live is not great. Um, borrowing a hotspot could be a great way to go. Um, I don't know how many people would think about libraries being associated with exercise, but believe it or not, many libraries offer uh, all kinds of different exercise classes because we do want to make sure our community members have access to healthy choices to have quality lives. So there's everything from Jerry Fit classes, which are classes that are uh, specially designed for seniors, and they help to improve balance and agility. There are um, cardio classes that involve the typical, you know, weight lift, like hand weights and stretchy bands. And then like at our library, we have cardio drumming. We're so fortunate. Um, one of our staff members is a drummer and she got into cardio drumming and um, people just love cardio drumming. <laughs> it's a fun way to exercise and um, it just feels like you're drumming, but there's music and it's, it's just a lot of fun and you don't have to be, um, you know, Jack Lane to be able to do it. <laughs> Another thing that a lot of libraries offer are programs around how to eat more healthy. Of course, we have lots of books on this topic, but um, some libraries like ours, we have a whole foods plant-based support group. So if you're trying to move into a lifestyle that involves eating less meat or maybe per perhaps no meat, that could be a group. We have had... Um, We've partnered with a woman from the URMC, and, and she's offered all kinds of classes on how to have a more healthy lifestyle, and those were a huge hit. Um, she was very energetic and talked about a variety of topics, everything from teaching people how to make simple recipes that are better choices for eating to uh, simple exercises and everything from soup to nuts she covered and all with a smile and people just loved it. So if you're looking for a place to um, find out how you can live a more health, healthy life, look to your library.
um, crafting. Maybe some of you may already realize this. Uh, libraries are generally quite adept at offering different arts and crafts programs. Um, in the pictures, you see some people have needle felted little snowmen. Uh, there is a woman who participated in class and made a cute Santa Claus wreath for a door. Um, we offer all kinds of craft classes and craft classes are a great way to keep your hands moving and keep them nimble, but it's also a great way to be social and to keep making new friends and having conversations so your mind can stay healthy as well. Um, music. I know that many of you have heard that the libraries have music concerts, which we do, but did you know libraries often uh, also offer things such as line dancing or acoustic guitar lessons, maybe music jams even, where you can sing if singing is your shtick, or maybe you play the guitar and you accompany the singers, or maybe you're a drummer like Julia at the library. Um, all kinds of opportunities to play music, which again, is a great social activity, and it's so good for your brain to do these things. And if, if you're not a drummer or a singer, or any of these things, and you just want to listen, you can always go to the library and um, we don't stop people from watching people jam out. We don't stop people from watching line dancing. And and that's, that's a great way to um, keep your mind nimble as well. We offer at the libraries lots of opportunities to play games like Euchre and Mahjong. Um, many of our libraries offer puzzles. Some even offer puzzle swaps. So if you're the type of person who loves to spend hours putting together puzzles, you could come to the library and do that. And you could even bring your old ones and trade to get new ones, which is a great way to save money. Because uh, if you've looked at puzzles recently, they're quite expensive. Point insurance reduction programs. Um, many libraries offer a program, usually it's through the AARP, and you you can take the pro take the class and at the end you can save up to 10% on your car insurance, which if you have a fixed budget um, can really help out. Not to mention it does make you a safer driver once you've gone through it. Um, we, anybody who is in any kind of situation, whether it be that you've just gotten a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, or um, maybe you're thinking about moving from a house to an apartment, or maybe you're struggling to pay heating or electric bills, the library is a great place to come. Um, if we don't know the answer right off the top of our head, it's okay because we generally are the place to come where we will do the research and find out the answers that you need. So please, if you have any question about how to get help or if there's any program available that can help you with some issue that you are having, um, come to the library and we will do everything we can to find out the answers that you need. Um, hopefully some of you, if not all of you, watched the movie that I had sent out ahead of the conference. Um, this slide talks about Medline and Medline Plus, um, this is a great source of medical information. I would say that if you don't have a lot of medical background, stick with Medline Plus because PubMed is very um, academic in nature. So not necessarily as easy to understand as Medline Plus. Um, Medline Plus, at just about anything you're going to want to know more information about, it'll be in there and it'll be written in terms that anyone can understand, which is really helpful. And if you did listen to the movie, I kind of walk you through how to get to it and how to use it. And if you didn't, or um, if you're having trouble watching the movie, I encourage you to stop by your library and just ask a librarian, because again, we're always happy to help you. Um, libraries often now have newsletters and the newsletter will come to your email. 
um, at this library. We happen to do one once a week. And if you subscribe to the email blast, you'll know about all the great exercise classes and health classes, music classes, um, arts and crafts classes, all the things going on. If there's a respite program, those types of things will be in this newsletter. And so I highly recommend call your library, find out how they distribute their event listings and how you can connect with a newsletter. So you will be in the know and be able to take advantage of all these great opportunities. Um, and again, <laughs> As this shows, libraries offer programs that keep people of all ages in the know. These are some pictures taken in Geneseo. I believe it was Geneseo. And all these seniors are learning about the Calypse so that when the big day did arrive, they, they understood exactly what was happening. And um, they had lots of fun displays that further reinforced, you know, what was going on up in the sky. And I'm sorry, I just see the poster. It's I think it's Avon. I apologize for saying Geneseo. But um, whether it's children or it's seniors or everybody in between, libraries make sure that people know what's going on and that they can understand it. If you can't get to your library or you know somebody who's homebound, um, many libraries have systems in place where books can be delivered directly to the home, books, audiobooks, movies, etc. In our system, we do have this program. And if you know somebody who could benefit, uh, please let the system know as they coordinate this important program. The email address for that is booksbymail at owl.org. You will be working with a, a librarian named Suzanne. She's wonderful and she just loves to see people get books and other materials by mail. Really makes her day. So please feel free to Tell anyone you know that's in Ontario, Wayne, Wyoming, or Livingston County about this great program. And oh, by the way, all the materials go to your door. There's no charge at all for any of it. If you happen to be a person who struggles to be able to see the print and books or other small items, libraries have all kinds of devices to help you. Um, at our library, we have a Da Vinci, which is like the device on the left. It is a screen with a camera that can be zoomed in on virtually anything you put there, whether you want to read something that has tiny print, or if you happen to, uh, let's say you're a coin collector or a stamp collector, and you can't really see the little print on those items anymore. You could even put that on the, at the table under the camera and it would show up giant on the screen. Um, we have, of course have large print books. We also have things called C pens. A C pen, you just kind of go over the print in a book like it's a highlighter marker, but instead of highlighting, it will actually read the words in the book out loud to you. Now, I'm not gonna say that the voice is the most easy to listen to, but it is, um, easy to understand and it does help if you're struggling to be able to read even if it's just on occasion something is um hard to decipher having a c pen can be helpful oh and i didn't put it on the slide but um libraries can also help people to connect to the new york state library for um books on tape, they're not literally on tape anymore, but if you struggle to be able to see the print, um, you can get into this program and have other books delivered right to your door that you can listen to. Libraries offer, also offer lots of materials that are digital. And in this system, we have Owl2Go. So you can borrow um, digital eBooks, audio books, and magazines. And all you need is a library card to be able to do it. There's no charge. Now, of course, you'd need a device like a, a computer, your cell phone, or an iPad. And you would be able to read books or magazines or even listen to them. Um, I believe I went back. 
So I think I've come to the end of my presentation, but um, I would love to know if anyone happened to um, watch the movie I had made in advance, if there are any questions about borrowing eBooks or um, using a library catalog, I'm happy to answer any questions. And if um, one of the moderators sees any questions, because I think, unless I get out of this, I cannot see any questions. That's okay, Stacey, it's Tara. I'm keeping an eye on the chat and the Q&A. Oh, okay, thank you. Someone asked if there was a link to your movie, but I believe that was set out to everybody prior to the conference, everybody that was registered. So correct me if I'm wrong, Laura, but I think we could probably send the link again following today to everybody who attended. Yes, I'll put it in the chat now. Great. Thank you. Also, if anybody has any questions that come up, because I know sometimes right after a presentation, there's a lot maybe going on in your mind and and you think of the question, you know, an hour later. Um, feel free to email me if you would like. It's Macedon Library Director at OWWL.org. Um, I'd be happy to help with any questions you may have. So it does look like we have a comment or two and a couple questions, Stacey. Okay. Um, if you would be so kind. Sure. So um, let's see. Somebody commented, I've also been setting up several patients with Libby on their tablets as tablets offer so many accessible accessibility features that can help make, make reading possible for people who have vision barriers. And New York Public Library offers a free virtual membership to any New York State resident. So that's good to know. That's true. Yeah. And, for example, ebooks, uh, um, you can make the font as big as you need it. You can look up a word on the spot in the dictionary, um, if you have a nook. I mean, there's so many different um, advantages that um, it could be helpful for someone. Thank you. We do have a couple of questions in the chat and then a couple more in the Q&A feature. Do representatives from the library offer presentations to independent living centers? Um, I think that that could be a conversation many library di directors would probably entertain. And uh, depending on the need, uh, I think there's a good likelihood that they would. <laughs> I can't speak for all the libraries, but I think um, it sounds like something that would be possible for sure. Right. And it, there's a lot of people uh, sharing other library resources that they've taken advantage of and thanking you. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And Laura put the link for Stacy's informational video in the chat. So if you didn't get it in the email or need to refer back to it, you can um, click on that and copy and paste it and watch it after the conference today. Um, let me click over to the Q&A and see what we've got for you, Stacy. Okay. Is there a list of libraries that do provide respite and are there functional requirements are there functional requirements for the drop-off respite? Yes. Um, I do not know of a list of libraries that offer respite at this point. However, I do know that there are uh, different requirements to be able to come to our respite. Um, so the, the biggest one is that the person must be able to toilet themselves and they must not be like, if you know that they're overly aggressive, um, we don't tend to take overly aggressive dementia pe people because we don't have the staffing for that. And we don't have the staffing that would be able to help with toileting needs. So those are the two big things. Um, pretty much anything else, as long as they're fairly mobile, again, you have to be mobile to be able to toilet yourself. So that would be another one. But um, for the most part, we take all sorts of different people. Wonderful. Someone says, thank you, Stacy. This is great information on all the benefits of utilizing the services that may be available to our, excuse me, 
to our local libraries. And then we have a question in here. Hi, I'm curious how much seniors are looking for print materials on health topics and issues. If so, how do you keep up with that with weeding things and things becoming outdated? Do you have any guidelines around this? Yeah, in general, um, I think the the gold standard for discarding materials that are of a medical nature or any kind of science nature is anything that's uh, around the three year mark needs to go and be replaced with something new. And of course, um, some of it is just trying to keep on top of things. So um, if something that commonly has been accepted as a as a this is how it is. I'm trying to think of something. All that comes to mind right now, it's not something to do with medicine per se, but a sciencey thing would be remember the whole deal with Pluto. Look, like, so you had to stay up on top of that because what is Pluto? Is it a planet? What is what's going on? So it's kind of like the Pluto thing, staying on top of what the scientists are saying and make making sure that the collection um, is in line with what's accepted at the time. Excellent. Let's see, we do have an additional question in the, here in the chat. Um, before I read that, I will share for those of you who um, are in the audience, other suggestions are coming in um, from your peers about respite that's available. And um, Elizabeth shared that a library near her has a library of things where people can check out equipment, computer parts, chargers, et cetera, et cetera. That's a great idea. And it looks like also Rochester Central Library has a new memory care collect collection and people can try out the animatronic dog, cat, and bird if they wanna have them on a trial basis before buying one. So lots of great information coming in from our audience as well, which is one of the best things about this conference is that we have these fantastic presentations, but we also have wonderful tips being shared by other people in our community. Yeah, um, it is true. Many libraries, I mean, we we have so many things that I knew when I did the presentation, I, I will miss things <laughs> because we don't all have every single thing that, one, you know, but we all have a lot. And um, to your point about the medical equipment, there are a number of libraries, I don't have a list, but there are libraries that have medical closets that, you know, let's say you need a walker or a wheelchair, um, you might be able to borrow one from a library, which is very helpful, especially if you're only going to need something temporarily. That's a great point, too. I will add that having worked in uh, several rural areas and gotten to know some of the area librarians, there's generally at least one person on site who's very savvy with technology and has offered to assist people that maybe need um, some guidance or maybe they don't have really fast internet at home and there's something that they wanna do from the library that maybe they can't do from home. and so. There's always so much friendly help at our local libraries when it comes to technology and accessibility too. Um, how do you determine the types of programs that are of interest to older adults in your community? Do you use surveys? Yeah, uh, surveys are a way, but I would say the number one way that I use um, that I use is to just have conversations with people. Um, people generally, if you spend some time talking to them, will tell you the needs. And then if enough people are telling you the same need, maybe not in the same exact words, but basically it's the same need, then you know, hmm, this could be, this could be an area I need to address and, and offer something. That's wonderful. Thank you for being such a champion for older adults in Wayne County. Thank you. Um, I just want to point out if anyone uh, is thinking they might want to tip off their library about the idea of having a respite program, um, I will be doing a conference that's going to be held at the OWL library system on July 12th. Um, if people are interested in the concept, that's what my presentation there will be all about, um, how to have a respite program at your library. 
Terrific. Would you mind repeating your email address, Stacey? And I'll go ahead and pop it into the chat. Sure. It's Macedon Library Director at owl.org. And it's owl with a W, two W's. Um, it stands for Ontario, Wayne, Wyoming, and Livingston counties. So a double W. A double W. <laughs> dot org. I'll pop it in and you can tell me if that looks right. So our audience has it. Okay. I think I spelled it wrong. I put an E in there. Let me try again, <laughs> everybody. It's Friday. My hands are tired. Macedon Library Director at OWWL.org. Try number two. Yes, that looks perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Does anybody have any other comments or questions to share with Stacy while we have her here with us? I'm not seeing anything else in the chat, but I'll take a moment for someone to pop something into the Q&A if there are any other remaining questions. Oh, one other thing that's kind of senior, well, it's people friendly, really, it's all ages. Um, many libraries no longer charge fines on materials as long as they come back. So um, if I know sometimes people have gotten away from libraries because of the fines, well, if that's something that's been uh, keeping you from crossing the threshold, know that many libraries no longer charge fines. We still require you to return the stuff. but. <laughs> uh -huh. That's good to know. I know some area libraries will say, well, if you bring in a canned good toward a certain donation, right. you're fine. So it's nice to know that um, that's not so much an issue anymore. We really appreciate that information. Yep. And um, even many programs are offered at very little, if not zero cost. So another thing to know if you're on a fixed budget or there's such a great resource. Laura says your presentation makes me want to hang out at the library. Yay! Everybody go to your local library station. Do it. <laughs> Lots of thumbs up and people commenting in the chat how much they enjoyed your presentation. And we're so grateful for you coming on and talking with us about everything that you're doing there at the Macedon Library. And Thank as you. I said, um, your creativity and your innovation are going such a long way to serve um, older people, but as you said, all people can take advantage of so many programs and services at our local library. So um, very timely presentation, and we appreciate you taking your time to be with us today. Thank you. Everybody have a good weekend.